Okay. Um, thank you very much for inviting us to speak to you. This is, this is a, an honor and a pleasure. Texas Jewish Arts Association is a volunteer run nonprofit arts organization for the visual and performing arts. We support our members by offering educational and social programming. Excuse me one second. And by bringing our artists work to the public through many types of opportunities in many different locations. Each presenter this evening is either a current or a past board member of Texas Jewish Arts. We'll each tell you about a different aspect of the organization and a bit about ourselves and our work. Our presentations will be about five or six minutes each. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we have time to get everybody and don't keep you all too late. So if you can remember your questions and ask them at the end, that would be great. I appreciate it. Uh, our first speaker is Nancy Cohen Israel. Nancy was a founding member and a past board member. And I'm going to let her speak to you. Nancy, are you able to unmute yourself or do I yes. need to? Yep, okay. here I am. I hope everyone can hear me. Do you let hear me? Share. Hang on, let me share my screen. Oops. Nothing to share. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Okay, well, I will go ahead and start. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. As Nan said, I'm Nancy Cohen Israel. I'm an art historian. I'm an arts writer. I write primarily for Patron Magazine and the Dallas Arts District Guide. And I'm an educator. I'm um, the manager of docent programs at the Meadows Museum here in Dallas. So as Nan said, we are an all volunteer program of organization, which began in 2013 when the Dallas Jewish Historical Society, somebody from uh, the Dallas Jewish Historical Society called me to say, we want to have a program about the arts in Dallas. And we would like to have you as the keynote speaker. And we're going to invite 12 artists. To be honest, I was a little leery of this. I mean, we all know that the lighting in Zale Auditorium at the JCC is not exactly conducive to showing artwork. And I was given the task of talking about Jewish art, like everything about Jewish art in 15 minutes. I felt a little bit about like the rabbis Hillel and Shammai, like tell me everything there is to know about Judaism while standing on one foot. So I will say, having said all that, that I managed to squeeze it into 15 minutes the artists brought beautiful work and the evening was a huge success. We probably had over 200 people there. And the, that night, of course, we got rave reviews, everybody loved it. And then the next day, I was getting phone calls, both from people who work in the art world saying that was such a great evening, we need to capitalize on this, as well as from artists saying that was such a great evening, we need to figure out a way to capitalize on this. And so I got together with Nan and Veronique and Jan Friedman and a few other artists and really started hammering out what would this look like? What would it be to have a Jewish arts organization in Dallas? And it was down to minutia, such as calling it the Texas Jewish Arts Association or the Texas Jewish Art Association. But in the end, we wanted to really open up the tent and have it something that represented all of the arts in Texas which in retrospect was a great idea. And so what I've done since with the organization, as Jan said, I was a founding member, I was a founding board member. I've also provided context, which is what art historians do, in case you were wondering. And so I, in the beginning, juried a number of exhibitions, I curated a number of exhibitions, I gave talks on the exhibitions that I curated, as well as provided some other art historical talks to the group. I gave one about um, the Bauhaus, History of Bauhaus in Israel, which was also really interesting. So that has been my primary contribution to the organization. Since then, you know, I've enjoyed all the hard work that has gone into the Texas Jewish Arts Association and it's really been a pleasure not only to watch it grow, but to have the interest of all of you, people such as yourself. So thank you again for being here this evening. I just wanna give one shout out to Nan before I turn the program over to her, the earrings I'm wearing tonight are Nan Phillips originals. <laughs> so with that, again, thank you. And I'd be happy to take questions at the end of the evening. 
Okay, did, was I able to share the screen? Can anybody see that? Yeah, but it's kind of coming up with a bunch of different things. So I think okay, it's my slide I'm, deck. I'm having a lot of trouble. Sorry about that. I hope I will be able to share my screen. Let me try this again. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. And there's another then that um, from somebody in the chat saying they keep losing sound. So I hope this is isolated and I hope it gets better. I'm going to put on my earphones. Hang on one second. Sorry about this. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay, good. But I can't, there we go. Okay, I am Nan Phillips. I'm current president of Texas Jewish Arts Association. I got started with the organization when I was one of the artists who Nancy invited to the presentation to the Jewish Historical Society. And I was standing in the room with the other artists. Uh, this was in 2013. And I was looking around and I realized that I knew most of the artists, but I knew that very few of them were Jewish. And I turned to Veronique Jonas and I said, I didn't know you were Jewish. And I had known Veronique for years through another organization. And I realized that we needed a Jewish arts organization so that we could meet each other, know who the other artists are, we could support each other and promote each other. So I became one of the people hounding Nancy to uh, create this organization. And I also became one of the five founding members. We have been in existence since 2013. Our first show was in 2014. We have had over 50 events since then and almost 100 members. We're somewhere close to 100. Uh, as if it weren't for the pandemic, every year we have an open membership show and a juried show, show receptions, art and thought programs, socials, events, and other programming. Wait, why don't you put the shirt on? This is Zoom. Yeah. Uh, see, somebody wants in and yeah, I, I'm having trouble. I'm gonna have to go out, let them in. Okay, can you all still see my screen? Yes. Oh, good. Our first presentation was in 2014. Um, it was an exhibition at the Jewish Community Center in Dallas, appropriately named Bereshit. Uh, it was a juried show. Nancy Cohen Israel was our juror. So she chose the work based on the merit of the piece to include in the show. Fast forward to 2017, we had a fascinating art and thought program called Aviation as Art, led by retired Captain Gary Gawk, who was an F-15 fighter pilot. Um, this was at the Kavanaugh Flight Museum. And the second part of this presentation was at a restaurant and he showed slides of his work with the Israeli Air Force. Yeah. Also that year, we had I'm a curated exhibition. Can they somebody don't. mute yourself, please? I hear talking. We had a curated exhibition called Take a Closer Look at the Gallery 
at North Haven Gardens in Dallas. This is just a smattering of what we've done. In 2018, we had a music and dance division kickoff. This is when we first started and brought music and dance into our fold. And you'll hear from both Suki John and Sarah Price in a little while. Later in 2018, we had a sukkah exhibition dwell in design at the Museum of Biblical Art, which was just a phenomenal program. And Veronique Jonas will tell you about that. In January of 2020, we had a collaborative juried show between Texas Jewish Arts Association and Texas Sculpture Association. So this was juried, the pieces were, were chosen again based on their merit. And the theme that the artwork had to fit was resolution, peace and unity. The piece in the center is by Jan Ayers Friedman, and she's going to speak in a little while. She can tell you about that. Just a phenomenal piece of work. And you can see in the reception, um, the show was at the Eisman Center in Richardson. It was a packed reception, and we had both music and dance performance at the reception. In February of 2020, we held a social at my house um, entitled Tale and Tell Soiree, where artists brought their work and spoke about their work, what it meant to them, how they created it, why they did it, what they did. And it was very, very interesting, wonderful evening of, of sharing. And then of course the pandemic hit and we went online just like everybody else. We've had some very interesting opportunities online. Um, Sarah Price brought musicians for the world to us and I hope she'll tell you about that. Uh, we are currently um, in a show with the Dallas Jewish Historical Society called Colors of Judaism. It's an online art show. We have had Dr. Dennis Kratz from UTD speak to us about thoughts of about public art and how to look at it and what it means. And we've given a presentation to the uh, Temple Emmanuel Sisterhood, just like we're doing this evening, plus many, many other things. We're trying our hand at going back to live uh, exhibitions. Uh, we have two exhibitions starting September 1st. One will be at Love Field Airport and the other will be at the Federation of Dallas. Uh, the Federation will be a three month rotational exhibition. So artist work will go in for three months and at the end of three months, we will switch out and have new work. We had hoped to have receptions at each one and guess what? Everything is shut down again. So we will try to do something different. Uh, we are also expanding our scope to encompass artists in the Austin and Houston areas. So that's in the offing for this year and next year. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a fused glass and a stained glass artist and sculptor. I have been president of Texas Jewish Arts since 2017. Before that, I was a founding member, uh, treasurer and membership chair. I was president of Texas Sculpture Association from 2008 through 2009. Apparently I don't learn very well. I do art sales, art shows, commission work. I've been teaching for 25 years and I opened my own studio in my home in 2008. Um, I've only taken over half the house and I allow my husband to have one room for his office. This is some of my fused glass sculpture. and some more, some fun fused glass sculpture. The picture on the right says beer, in case you couldn't tell. 
The one on the left is a beer mug, some dichroic glass jewelry, Judaica, Mezuzot. In 2017, I was given a commission to create 17 mezuzot for a new building wing at Adath Yashurin in Louisville, Kentucky. So those are permanently affixed to the doors in their education wing. I do lots of different types of commission work. And these are two of my students and um, a couple pictures of my, from my studio. The picture on the upper right is five of my eight kilns. And the picture in the center at the bottom uh, is my cold working equipment that those are glass grinders and drill press and glass saw and a big grinder uh, in the back, that big green thing. These are some of the pieces that my students have made in the past. And we would love to have you join us. I am going to pass the baton to uh, Suki. And Suki, I hope you have the ability to share your screen. I think that I do. Thank you, Nan. I love seeing your artwork and I'm so impressed by all of your kilns and all of your <laughs> high tech equipment. <laughs> I work with the instrument I was born with my body as a dancer and choreographer. So that's um, pretty much what I've been trying to figure out how to use my entire life. So uh, when I see uh, complicated technical equipment, I say, I'm very impressed. Um, I am uh, happy to be the director of dance for TJAA, Sarah Price, and I became the performing arts contingent in 2017. And um, it's been really wonderful having the support of this group of artists, especially since I'm not originally from the area. So um, it's nice to find fellow Jews and fellow artists in Texas. I am working on a really big project and I'm going to share my screen. Uh, the project is called the Shema Project. This is our website, which is under uh, construction. It isn't quite done, but if you want to take a look, it's called the Shema Project. This, uh, what you're looking at is uh, footage from a production we originally uh, did in New York. But the work that you're looking at, and I'll, I'll show, um, I'll actually show this video too, um, was originally created in the former Yugoslavia before the Bosnian War. It is based on the story of my family during the Holocaust. And um, our project at this point is to educate young people in Texas about the Holocaust. We are going to try to help them um, ultimately reject hate speech and behaviors that lead to atrocities and genocide. There is, as you probably are aware, a real dearth of education about the Holocaust, and there is a rise in anti-Semitism around the world. And my experience as an educator, I'm a professor of dance at TCU, um, really teaches me that um, we can do a lot with young people if we give them the opportunity to respond creatively. And if we try to teach people with different methods, so you can't teach everybody with Schindler's List. You can't teach everybody by having them read the Diary of Anne Frank. People have different learning styles. And for some of us, that's theater or dance. It's what we call kinesthetic empathy. So we feel something when we see other people moving. So the idea, and as I said, you can go to the website and read this. I'm 
you can all read, so I'm not going to read it to you, but just seeing some imagery of what we're working on. Um, the idea is to take it uh, into the Metroplex, into schools in the Metroplex, to do the choreo drama or narrative ballet in schools and bring students in from surrounding schools so that we don't just get one group of students, but that we get a very diverse group of young people. And in order to contextualize all of this, we are going to do what we call upstander workshops. So um, particular teachers will decide that they want to be part of this program and they will opt in with their class or a particular class. So they're going to know that in their curriculum, they're going to have to give maybe three class periods to our project. One is a pre-performance workshop where we prepare students who may or may not have information about the Holocaust and students who may or may not have ever seen dance. We prepare them to see the ballet and then we do a post-performance workshop with students, getting them to talk about what they saw and what they learned and what they thought and how they felt. The idea is to really um, give them a creative outlet because this is really difficult to, to hear and learn about. Um, so I've been working on this project for a very long time. Um, I have some support from TCU, which is awesome. And um, I am showing you my pictures as I talk. So um, as you see, I've you know worked with people at TCU. This is me when I was in New York. These are some students at TCU. Uh, and we are doing this not as a um, TCU project, but with some of the resources of TCU. For example, they're giving me rehearsal space, which is a really big deal. I have to get 15 dancers into a space and rehearse for a month. So the fact that we're going to have a rehearsal grant makes a really big difference. Um, I would like to show you a very quick excerpt. It's only two minutes. It's a, uh, an edited, it's actually a, like a trailer. Uh, because I can talk to I'm blue in the face, but I think the dance speaks for itself. So here's uh, the trailer for Shema. <laughs>
So that's a brief. Hold on, sorry. It wants to play again. That, sorry, that was a um, two minute excerpt from a work that's an hour and a half long. We will be taking it into the schools in a shortened version that fits into a class period, probably um, an hour or even less, depending on the schools. Um, I am um, already talking to the uh, Fort Worth ISD, um, the um, Tarrant County Jewish Federation is interested in partnering. Um, I really want to get it into um, the uh, Booker T. Washington in um, Dallas. So that's, um, I'm really happy to say that uh, this is the big project for um, TJAA for the coming year. We won't even go into the schools until next fall, a year from now. But um, I've got a lot to do in the meantime. I got to get everything ready. And anybody wants to join our, what I call the Shma Menches, we need lots of Menches to make this project happen. So thank you for, for listening. And I, um, I don't know if we have, I don't think we have time for questions, do we? So we'll move on. Um, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, let's move on. Suki, move on. thank you. That was, that was really moving, just the two minutes of it. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I would, I would like to introduce Veronique Jonas next. Veronique was our first president. Um, she was president from 2013 to 2017 when I took over. And she is now on our advisory board. Uh, Veronique, let me bring up your presentation. Veronique, are you there? I'm here. Oh, good. Okay, hold on a second. Let me. Um, it's not letting me share the screen. Anybody have any ideas? Does Suki have to unshare it? I don't know. I've already stopped sharing. Um, and I put it back to one participant can share at a time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I just think she needs what? to start talking and she'll show yeah, up. Yeah, Veronique, just start talking. Yeah, well, thank you, Nan. And it's so good to see all of you here. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Um, just until Nan gets our images up, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am an artist uh, for many, many years. I'm also a founding member, as you saw from Nan's presentation of TJAA. And um, I was the first president and I held office for four years and um, thank you to Nan for taking over four years is a long time <laughs> to be president <laughs> and now Nan has beaten that record I think but anyway um, it's been a wonderful journey uh, wonderful to know so many artists that are Jewish in the area and to um, hopefully have made a a contribution to the art world in uh, Dallas from the Jewish perspective. Um, as Nan told you, when um, we started off, we had a lot of shows and we, we concentrated on art exhibitions and um, anything that had to do with art, basically. Um, where we deviated slightly was when we came up with the idea of having a sukkah uh, project. We called it the Sukkah Project. And basically what it was, was a, a competition which we extended nationwide. And actually it was on the, it was on our website. So it went further than the nation. It went to Canada, it went to Mexico. And so it basically, it was a call for architects 
to create a really creative sukkah, as you see in this first picture. We had about um, 27 entries from all over the country, including Mexico City and Canada. We had to choose 10 winning entries. And these artists, these architects were commissioned to put up their sukkahs at the Museum of Biblical Art. It was a major, major uh, project, as you can imagine. It took a lot of um, planning. It was in the plan works for about two years, a lot of fundraising and a lot of, um, uh, just a lot of work um, dealing with people, dealing with all the logistics of putting such a huge project together. I'm not sure if you guys, if any of you came to the Sukkot project. Unfortunately, we did not have, can you slow down a little bit, Nan, please? Oh. Sorry, we were not um, prepared for the bad weather that we encountered, but we uh, went through it and uh, we had a wonderful exhibition and an opening, an opening festival, a sukkah festival. Uh, we, um, we had, you can pass, you can move on. We had all sorts of other, it was a festival, literally. We had a community sukkah, if you see, can you see my cursor? No. Yeah, no, okay. So we had a community sukkah, which was created for the whole community to use. I know Temple Emmanuel used it as well as uh, one of the, um, uh, the people who, who participated. We um, catered to children on that day of the opening. We had an artist exhibition, as you see on the bottom left. We also introduced our arts component. We had our musical um, uh, director, Sarah Price, performing, and we also had a dance performance. It was the most wonderful experience because the dance, especially the dancers, the dancers used the entire Sukkah project to perform. They did not concentrate just on one stage. They moved through all the sukkahs. And as you can see in this middle picture, they went from sukkah to sukkah expressing themselves in dance. So it was an absolutely wonderful um, experience. Um, what else can I tell you about the sukkah project? As I said, it was a huge, huge uh, undertaking. Each um, winning sukkah was awarded $1,800. Uh, for bringing their sukkah to Dallas. And uh, hold on, <laughs> hold on. There's so much to talk about the sukkah project because it was so multifaceted. I would say that it's probably the biggest thing that TJAA has done to date because it was so multifaceted. The pictures that you see on the bottom are pictures of our um, uh, um, multi, um, what was it, Nan? It was multi religious. Um, people were just invited to participate and to come and learn about sukkahs. So we had a lot of um, uh, support from the community, not just the Jewish community, but the general community. We extended it to schools. We had uh, one Christian school that participated and um, put up the most beautiful sukkah. So it was really interdenominational. I guess that's the, that's the word I was looking for. So um, I'm happy to answer questions about the sukkahs at the end, but I'm gonna move on and tell you a little bit about my own work. Um, I'm essentially a painter. I also do sculpture. These are some of my paintings. Some of them are plein air. I do a lot of plein air paintings, especially when I'm out in Michigan, as you can see from the painting on the right. Uh, plein air is really my passion. I love being in touch with nature. It makes me feel so alive. And just the idea of capturing one of God's creation is just magical. So in my own interpretation, of course. So let's move on and I'll just show you a few more. That's me painting amongst the sunflowers in Michigan. Yes, Michigan does have sunflowers. I didn't know that until I was here. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> Don't need to talk too much about myself here. I was fascinated, I've always been fascinated with sunflowers from Michigan to the one on the bottom is from Italy. 
So um, that's a lot of my work, but let's move on because I've got other things to say quickly. Um, the other part of my personal work is creating ketubas. I'm a ketuba artist. These are two of my ketuba creations. I do not do the, the calligraphy myself, um, but I do the artwork. I do it on commission. I'm also represented at uh, ketuba.com. They sell prints of my work. And that's also a very joyful part of my work because of, of course, to work with a young couple that is about to enter new phase in their life together is really a wonderful experience. And I really enjoy doing that. My ketubas are essentially done in watercolors. I do also do some paper cuts, but I don't have examples of that right here. Um, this is just an image of my studio, a little bit of everything, as you can see, very small little studio, but plenty of room to create. And as I said, my passion is outdoors. So I guess I have the biggest studio in the world. <laughs> so, I think that's about it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, the one thing I didn't tell you about because I don't see the slides, but a very big part of my paintings of my work is related to the Holocaust as well as um, natural things. The Holocaust is very important to me. First of all, I am a docent at the Holocaust Museum. Um, I'm passionate about the Holocaust because of my family history with the Holocaust. And I've created a new body of work and you can see it by these two images on the wall on the left, a new series of Holocaust paintings that are based on text. So basically I look at texts from Primo Levi or Simon Wiesenthal and I take some quotes and put them in my paintings and I create an image that expresses those uh, quotes. So that's a very big part of my artwork is a Holocaust series. I also am part of a Holocaust series called The Color of Memory, which has shown in Dallas three times now. We are about um, Julie Metal Berman, the other member, another member who was a founding member of TJAA her work and my work were put together in a series called The Color of Memory and we are about to uh, show in Florida. That's our next mm. exhibition space. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope that I've given you a little spark of what I do. It's, um, um, it's all fun and I really enjoy being part of TJA and be part of this really creative organization and surrounded by these wonderfully creative people in the many fields that they do. Thank you. Thank you, Veronique, that was great. Uh, next up is going to be Jan Ayers Friedman. And Jan is past secretary of TJAA and one of the founding members. She was secretary from 2013 through 2018. You serve two terms, so on you go. There we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm so grateful to everyone for being here tonight. Uh, you will find out I become excited when I see connections happening, and that's what I'd like to talk about tonight. Uh, pictures of what I've done people and organizations I've connected with that have influenced my art. This is an illustration that I did. If you remember Reb Yitzhak Malka at Teferet Israel uh, did a book series and this was an illustration for a cover page for one of his books um, that I happen to like very much myself. Let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll try to be kind of quick. <laughs> That's not usual for me. What I want to say about the TJAA in general is what it has afforded me and the members. And the first one is collaboration, just by meeting people and connecting with them. This was me and Nan before TJ ever, ever existed, uh, working collaboratively with a hanging sculpture that we hung at the Cedars Gallery in, in uh, Dallas. And working with Nan, just herself, uh, has been pivotal. Um, I knew how to fuse glass, but not the way she does it. 
And as a result, I've met other people. Uh, and as a result of knowing Nan, uh, I got invited to this, um, the Jewish Historical Society's night and was present there that night. And that was pivotal to continuing my, the way I think and therefore the way that I produce art. I liked my hair back then. I'm a, I, it won't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, it's more fun when other people are happy to dive in with you. So with the Jewish Arts Association, that's something that, that has happened. Uh, we build community. Um, we had already, Tiferet Israel, my late husband and I belonged there, and uh, we had already begun a collaboration with Tiferet. This was, is, and was a community garden that I built and started. Uh, this was a bumper crop of cilantro. If you like cilantro, <laughs> uh, it, it, it kind of, but, but you work with what you've got, right? So uh, the, the shed behind was donated by uh, a member of the congregation. Um, it, it was brilliant. The bricks were laid by a local Boy Scout troop. And again, we just come together over and over. Tiferet Israel uh, recently, you know, COVID, prior to, to COVID, uh, as you know, the kosher chili cook-off was forced to take a, take a break during this, but they are still, we are very interested in partnering and finding ways to bring um, art and children's workshops to the community. Um, okay, let, we can go. Outreach. This was huge. Um, I because of the friends I'd made, I'm now in Fort Worth uh, through the Jewish Federation here, uh, got to know Kim Goldberg, who, was, who is deeply connected into the partnership program through the Fort Worth Tarrant County Jewish Federation. I did an arts residency there for two weeks. Uh, we stayed in, in Akko, Israel, which I then went back to just on my own. Uh, but partnering with the Federation, building, uh, there's a new park being dedicated at that time. And we led children uh, to learn how to do mosaics and they built stepping stones to, to be installed in this park. And the friendships that I met there uh, are still ongoing. Um, and the kids were tremendous. They were, they were insane. Almost none of them had English and I have no Hebrew. So, you know, fortunately I don't have any trouble being comical. So I made them laugh. They worked, we all had a wonderful time. The Druze community there, uh, because of the work that partnership together is doing, um, the Druze community invited us to have some coffee that came in little bitty cups, you know, and it was, pre it was beautiful. And the people that live there in, in Israel, my friend Eitan, is building a working relationship with the Druze community there. Um, so what else? Opportunity. Well, you've heard about that. Uh, but because of the TJAA's uh, working relationship with the uh, first the Biblical Arts Museum in Dallas, now it's added the National Center for uh, Jewish Art as an entire wing by itself. Uh, George Tobolowsky is very instrumental in working with Scott Peck there. This was a sculpture that I had done. Um, trying to visualize conceptual ideas about the Jewish religion, particularly the levels of soul. And this is what I, this is made out of resin. It is now it and a partner piece, uh, Neshama, 
are now part of the permanent collection at the uh, National Center for Jewish Art there in Dallas. So opportunity, right? Just knowing these people and connecting. Um, uh, a shot of the Eisman Center. Uh, and Nan was longtime president of the Texas Sculpture Association. I was a member as well as the Texas Jewish Arts Association. So bringing these two together at the Eisman Center, such a prestigious location, Chuck Eisman was there that night. And um, the artists. Uh, Jan, would you briefly tell them about your piece? I showed a picture of it. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we don't have one in this. My piece. Um, nope. Um, uh, the, the copper ladle and then the rocks. Those rocks were two chunks of concrete that I asked for and was given. They had been thrown through the glass doors of Teferit Israel in maybe 2012, 13. And I knew I wanted to do something with those. And I waited for these years. And then finally, this exhibition opportunity came up. And my collaborator and sister, who's a metal worker, Carol Chanson, she made the ladle and incorporated the shin into it. And the whole, it's, it's presented in a bowl of water. And the rocks are facing each other like this. And the title of it is an invitation to join in a useless but necessary endeavor. And the point is with that ladle to dip some water and pour it over the rocks. The, the point is with enough time and enough water, the rocks erode, which will not happen. It, but it builds the intent. If I do this useless endeavor, I become stronger and I become more focused on what intention I'm going to put forth in the world. So everyone, when, if you ever see it again in an exhibit, you are please invited to pour the water. Thank you. This is a shot in my studio. Uh, my, my studio, the Wi-Fi sometimes is very spotty there. So I'm, I'm doing this from home like, like most of you. Um, most of my work lately has been black and white as you see with the, just the experimental circle. It turns out, I made this two years ago. It turns out, yeah, it looks like a COVID virus. I'm, I'm thinking, what can I do with that that's not so obvious. Right now, it just stays like that. Uh, this is what I'm working on currently. My work tends to be, I can work very classically. It's important to learn classic drawing, painting techniques. And then because other people who work classically are as good as me, and some are better, I don't have to stay there. Now I can break the rules. So as you saw on the last slide, I'm, I can be very conceptual. This one, I'm going back to photography and uh, printing photography. This is very large, uh, 30 by 48. And then I'm, I'm working on it uh, with pen and ink and with colored pencil and with different, and I'm that's been very exciting for me. These are some trees, historical trees that are on the golf course here in Fort Worth that I've fallen in love with. <laughs> they, aren't they great? Ah, okay, this is a self-portrait. I'm a cartoonist at heart. But the TJAA, uh, we're looking we're looking for these connections. We want to add even more. We've got the music, we've got the dance now, and, and they're working so beautifully. We've got the arts. We want to add 
writing. We want to add Jewish studies. We want to involve rabbis. We want, you know, the, your groups, uh, what ideas are out there and let us know and tell us and join and let's all, let's all connect. Let, let's all, oh, I know her. Oh, I know her. Oh, you know, and she and you. And I have become one of the mentions that Suki John mentioned, uh, working in about this much capacity uh, on the Shema project. And, and she, she blows my mind, the things that she's capable of and, and, and can do that I cannot. So it's an opportunity for me to just sit back and learn what's Jan, possible. Thank you very, very much. Uh, next up is going to be Donna Harris. And let's see if I can bring that up. Donna is a past board member also. Okay, am I sharing the screen, I hope? Not yet. No? Yeah. It's still on me, or my... I'm having trouble with my mouse. Ooh. There we go. No, no, no. <laughs> I got it. Why do we always have technological problems when we're doing this? Your computer loves cartoons. Obviously. Okay, let's close that. I said close. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, oops. All right. Now, that's now am I sharing the screen? Yes, you are. Yay, okay, go right ahead. Okay, um, hang on one second. So I'm Donna Harris. And I am a fine art photographer, but it took me 30 years to call myself an artist at all. I'm, I'm extremely creative and I'm always creating something, whether it's new food uh, recipes and um, whatever. But anyway, I've known Ann for a long time. I, I had a, at one time I had a media company that promoted art and culture in Dallas. And so I got to know her about 15 years ago. And um, so I got involved with this group a few years ago, but I've always known about it. It's just a great group. And I am very multicultural, um, mostly uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Native American, uh, Mexican, and German Ashkenazi. <laughs> so I, when I take photography, um, I, I look at it through a very multicultural lens. Whenever I see another person, I just feel like God is breathing through all of us. And um, everything, I feel like there's just so much of all of us represented in, in photography and just the ordinary things that are, that are ordinary maybe to me, may not be ordinary to somebody else, um, or just things I find beautiful. This particular piece, Georgia O'Keeffe has painted it a million times. And I happened to be in Taos a few years ago and the weather, the stormy weather was on my side. So that was just a great shot um, I got. This next shot is a piece that I, I, when I travel, I travel a lot by myself and I got out of my car and I climbed down to the Rio Grande River and I was just taking photos and there was nobody down there. And I saw, and I'd been down there shooting for a while and I heard somebody going, hey, hey. And so I look over and there's a woman from East Dallas and I was driving from Santa Fe to Taos and it was somebody I knew, Lottie Minnick, and who happened to be there. And it's like on the side of the river. So I always feel like God is always with me. So I'm never, never afraid when I'm out shooting. Um, this next piece um, on the Pueblo Reservation um, is very meaningful to me because, um, and it's for historical reasons, it so identifies um, with, Jewish spiritualism, just our whole connection, as um, Jan was saying, 
This was a church on the Pueblo reservation that the women and children were locked in and the Calvary and a lot of um, the United States uh, locked them in and they burnt it to the ground with the women and children in it. And the people on the Pueblo reservation chose to leave it there as a remembrance. So, you know, and so there's so much connection, especially for me being Jewish and Native American and Spanish Portuguese. So when I shoot, it's just, it's a, it, it, it's just a very meaningful thing for me. Um, you can kind of keep scrolling if you want to. So most of my photography is inspired through sociology, social subcultures, and I really tend to focus on like transportation, water, graffiti, natural uh, places. That, um, you can just kind of scroll through that. And this, again, that's on the Pueblo Reservation. That's a home. Um, the other, the, the piece that was, okay, hang on. <laughs> Um, like the backup. So trains are like a big thing now. And so um, train cars and people are making swimming pools out of them. They're making houses out of them. This was out in the country somewhere in New Mexico. I was just driving around. And it's, to me, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's just, um, it's somebody's made a home out of something quite beautiful. And then the next shot of transportation also was in Dallas in 2011. I happened to be down by the convention um, in business, business bureau. And I call this two in on a train because there's, there's a woman in each window and you'd have to see a bigger picture to see it. But I just feel like, you know, I'm a huge Mavericks fan. I go to a lot of games I'm, I'm an MFFL girl. But, you know, when I saw that, it was so striking to me and it just was just happened like that, which is how my better pictures are. And I just saw these women. I'm like, these women are winners. They're going somewhere for their families on this train to Westmoreland. And um, so it, to me, there's such beauty in everyday, ordinary life. And that's, those are my two beautiful daughters. So it's uh, lucky to have two gorgeous daughters. My older one on the left there when she graduated from college and moved into the Kirby building. <laughs> so that's the Adolphus there you can see. And then my younger daughter, she had never hung clothes on the line. So that's her hanging clothes in France. And that was like a new experience because kids in the United States don't hang clothes. <laughs> well, not, at least not in Dallas. Um, so again, just, just beauty and ordinary. Um, so you can keep going. These are the next few shots I think uh, I took in uh, San, um, San Antonio of the Mission Trails. So I, I have a whole, most of the work that I do is in series. And so almost everything I have is a part of a series. This is a D in Detroit of an abandoned mansion. Um, I love shooting in Detroit. I've been several times. It's just an amazing uh, town and what they're doing with just the remnants and the rubble to me is, is beautiful. Um, I think I've got some graffiti on here from Detroit. Yeah, this is a piece in Detroit and it's by the farmer's market. And there's, um, as you can see, there's carrots and bags of carrots being thrown away. And so whoever painted this was very strategic in, in the placement of this piece, which is why I absolutely love graffiti. Um, because it so speaks to me about poverty. And I think the next shot's a similar shot, yeah. You can see the bags of food that are being thrown away. And so, um, so, um, so most of my work is sociological in nature. Is that it? No, you can just keep going. <laughs> no, it's not going anywhere. Oh, really? There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. So I started doing a lot of digital manipulation about 10 years ago. And this shot is a, uh, we were in France with some friends back in 2014. And then I kind of changed it a little bit there. You see on the right, there's so many cool apps now. You don't have to sit down like you used to have to sit, which is why I hated uh, editing my photos. And I would just take photos and take photos. I just hated editing because they took so much time. But there's so many cool apps now. I can change photos. And so the next few photos that you see are ones that I, those are my daughters. Those are pictures I've taken of my daughters and I've just kind of digitally manipulate them and print them on watercolor and, um, or canvas or whatever. So I help people do that if they want to change some of their photos. And then I, and then I kind of create art pieces. I had taken a vote. I was at MoMA. Um, that's a shot on the right of MoMA and 
I was sitting there watching and this one guy, if you see on the far left and that skinny little thing, he was taking pictures. And I thought, well, that's weird. So I was kind of taking a picture of him taking a picture. And then the guy in the hat walks up and he starts taking a picture. And then all these other people start taking a picture. I'm like, what are you taking a picture of? So I asked the security guard and he said, what well, was something Trump owned out there? And I'm like, okay. And I thought, oh my God, these people became the artwork in MoMA and they don't even know it. <laughs> I love that, but that's, that's, you know, that to me is like totally fun. And this guy I met behind a cement plant in West Dallas. I was walking around, I owned some property there with my family and um, he was working on a truck on the street and I ran into him, was just chatting and he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, you know, I was just, you know, shooting pictures of, you know, blah, blah. I told him I was with the Dallas Morning News. I totally lied because I, I, you know, I didn't want to be murdered or anything. <laughs> and so <laughs> anyway, he said, well, I love Dallas. You want to see how much I love Dallas? And I thought, wow, there's only one answer. And I'm like, yeah. And he showed, he raised his shirt and I thought, oh my gosh, I totally won the lottery. I mean, this guy, <laughs> I mean, and it's, I call this piece self-inflicted and I was like, try to be really really cool saying, you know, do you mind if I take pictures? And he's like, no. And I'm like, on the inside, I'm like, oh. it was <laughs> awesome. And so I, I, and he did that himself and he apologized that some of the buildings were missing. He did it a long time ago with a friend with some whiskey and a friend. And um, I, I just thought it was incredible because as someone who used to promote Dallas, whenever you see our collateral, the reunion tower is always on the opposite side, but because he lives in West Dallas, reunion tower was on that side. And so I thought that was such an interesting uh, sociological perspective. But anyway, I, that's one of my very favorite pieces. And that guy's, and I don't know if y'all recognize this, but this is Cher's bottom. It was my last concert I went to in 2019. And I do a lot of phonography, a lot of phonography. And um, she was 72 years old at this concert. And it's kind of her, I, I mean, all these lights at the bottom are people on their phones, um, you know, taking pictures or whatever. I don't know, it was, I guess we used to do Bix at concerts a long time ago. Now it's phones, people flash their phones. And I just thought, that was just such an amazing, um, it just happened in a split second. And so I feel very fortunate that I got shared bottom. <laughs> I, I aspire to that. Okay, so this is part of my uh, $10,000. So on when COVID hit, I'm an avid swimmer. I swim five days a week at the J. And when COVID hit, they shut down the pool. I started, I thought, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So I started walking five miles every day in my neighborhood. So I took an 1100 mile walk around the block. And every day I shot pictures of objects that were not there the day before. And there, you guys would not believe the weird things that show up on the street from one day to the next when you're walking 1100 miles. Well, this was the biggest mushroom I'd ever seen. So I have a million shots of the underbelly of that mushroom. And that that's what the shot on the right is. It's the underbelly. So I really get into, I really get low when I <laughs> shoot photography. I get in the river and I get low. So um, anyway, um, that's Temple Emmanuel on that sn uh, Snowmageddon. And I walked over, I'm, I'm about five minutes from it. So I walked over the next day when I could get out and it was, you know, starting to recede pretty quickly. But I, um, I just really like that shot. And the next picture I think is at Temple Emmanuel as well. And I do, like I said, I digitally manipulate a lot of my photos and um, there's a lot of them that were skipped here, but that's okay. Um, and then I started painting during COVID. And so that's my first piece that's actually something recognizable. So I call it baby steps. It's a big giant poppy that hangs in my living room. And so I would actually like to start painting a lot of my photos that I take. And so right now I'm working on my 10,000 photograph project because that's about how many photos I have. So I'm trying to organize them. Um, and it's daunting, it's very, actually very daunting, but um, that's, that's kind of where I am. So I really appreciate all of you guys inviting us here. I, I, I forgot who was it that called me on the phone when we did this for uh, Sisterhood, Temple Emmanuel. Hello? Are I don't know, you, you brought us here. You brought it to us. Exactly. Well, somebody here, uh, uh, whoever oh, Greta. invited us. Oh, Greta. Greta, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. 
so she had she had come to our presentation at Sisterhood that we did for the TJAA did for Sister Emmanuel, and so then she called me and asked if we would speak of here, and I'm just so thrilled that you guys were so interested in learning more about TJAA because we are the best kept secret ever, and Jan and Nan and Nancy and everybody has worked so hard. We don't want to be a secret anymore. <laughs> we want to share it with the world, but we also invite people who are not Jewish into um into G tjaa because um we are open to everyone i feel frozen am i frozen no oh, okay you're, great you're fine okay great okay. um anyway so we really appreciate this donna thank you very very much uh do we have sarah sarah price are you on yes i'm here oh yay okay um, I am going to put up your slides, and I know that we are running late, and I'm sorry. Um, I hope this is not a problem for everybody. I'm not as talkative as the rest, so it probably won't be an issue. <laughs> okay. Well, I am trying to share your screen. Go, go ahead and... I'll go ahead and introduce myself. So I'm Sarah Price. I'm the music director for TJA. Um, I'm a violinist and, and a music instructor um, based in Fort Worth. Um, I run a full-time teaching studio, lots of students, and then I play for um, several ensembles throughout the state of Texas. Um, I've been on the board, TJA board, since 2018. and um, in case you haven't noticed, I am the youngest member on the board, so um, I have not amassed the knowledge and the connections that the other board members have and former board members have at this time, but TGA has been great at giving me a launching pad to create projects and to get experience with nonprofits and being on a board of a nonprofit. And um, I'm going to kind of quickly ex briefly explain some of the projects that we have put on that have to do with music. So up here in the, let's see, top left corner, you have, that is a scene from the Iceman show that has already been mentioned. Um, I had connections with the Israeli Composers League in Tel Aviv, and I had two composers from there compose pieces, pieces for this art show. And Suki John, the director of dance, choreogra choreographed um, a beautiful dance to one of the pieces. And then that scene there is us doing an improvisation with dancers from TCU. And then let's see. Um, yes, there's uh, more from the music and art show, and again, playing for different art exhibits. Um, at the bottom, that is the Fort Worth Community Center through a Jewish lens. We did, I taught a music class and we created a composition for, um, through a Jewish lens at the, yes, that was for the Federation of Tarrant County and TGA uh, co-junct um, joint venture that put that on. I'm, I'm looking at these and I'm going blank. I'm like, what were these again? Um, anyway, and then we have uh, one of our pianist members, um, Horam Wallano, who's serenading us at one of the gatherings on a beautiful Steinway owned at the MBA. And um, so more on the Israeli Composers League that I um, definitely worked on. So over here on the right side, and uh, yep, and there's their logo up there. Um, through them, I was able to meet some composers and try and get their pieces performed here in the U.S. That is still an ongoing project. It's just kind of going as funds and time are available. Of course, COVID is not helping anything right now. So um, this was a project though that I did for an online video and um, Ayala Asharov Kalas, she is a wonderful Israeli composer and she composed a solo violin work for me to perform and I video by myself and 
sent it out and it was basically done in September 2020 and it was to reflect the emotions of 2020 and having to perform alone and do everything alone and by yourself and um, I will put a link in the chat so that you can go online and watch the performance of the finished product. And then over here to the left, this was another online presentation that we did. Um, this is a new organization called Musicians for the World. It is operated by two great friends of mine, that I've, two other violinists that I've known for years. And they run an online program that helps and teaches underprivileged children in Africa, South America, and the Caribbean. Um, basically how to play musical instruments. Usually the um, schools or where these kids study already have a program and they basically elevate the level of teaching and um, quality of instruction for kids that basically couldn't have never afford to touch an instrument in their life and they also do help get them instruments um, i will also link their website in the chat as well so that you can go and check them out and see what kind of work they're doing i know they're always in need of need of funds because they are growing so much they have so many students right now it's insane but um let's see what else i did blow through that stuff um yeah, that's really all for now. Um, I don't really have a lot planned right now. I'm really busy with some auditions and stuff that are coming up, but um, I'm hoping that we can do something again with Musicians for the World and that we will attract more music members. And then with them, they will bring their ideas and we can collaborate and create new stuff together. Yeah. Okay. Put Thank the, you very much. I just put a bunch of links in the chat. So Right. Okay. Also, uh, you can go to the TexasJewishArts.org website, and everything is there. You can look under Music News. You can go to Past Events, and there are links to everything we've talked about and shown you and lots of uh, lots of pictures oops so now we're done with our presentation um are there any questions anybody i think it was wonderful i just want to commend greta for organizing it this is ed I think it was really wonderful and impressive what talented people we have in our community and how they work together. So I loved it. Thank you. Is there, is there, is there any connection to other um, cities? We are in Atlanta. Is there an Atlanta Jewish arts organization? No, actually there are only three Jewish arts organizations in the country. There's us, there's someplace in California and huh? Salon in New York. I'm gonna thank you. So that is it. Uh, Nan, had we been approached um, by, the, we've been approached by some other city outside of our uh, region. Yes, we're expanding into the Austin area and the Houston area. I'm working with uh, somebody at the JCC in Houston who's in charge of the uh, art department there. And we're either going to form a Houston chapter or incorporate Houston artists into the fold. So uh, Nancy Israel, she didn't get to speak. I, or did I miss it? Did I miss what she? I missed, I, I was a very quick five minute intro. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. You want to say no. Thank you very much. It was really wonderful and learned so much about the, the whole the variety of uh, talented artists that you have in your question. We can't see it. Uh, 
Man. Yes. Um, you know, we, you know, uh, we have a, a, a Greta and I have a, a few technical difficulties. We, we've seen most everything and we have enjoyed it so much. And, you know, your organization, uh, we're, we're really rooting for you. Everything you're doing, it's just fantastic. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we so much appreciate what you've done tonight and uh, look forward to seeing more and more good things from the organization and from each of you. Thank you very much. I do want to say that uh, TJAA membership is open to everybody, anybody. You do not have to be an artist. We're always looking for people who are rooters. Uh, we're, <laughs> uh, we need audience. So if you would like to join us, please just go to our website. We would love to have you. And that way you'll receive all of our information. You'll find out when we have shows and receptions, uh, when we have things online you may want to join. Happy to have you. Did I, did I freeze? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having us, for inviting us. This was delightful. Um, we will let you all go to bed. Uh, I'm looking out your window, and it's gorgeous out there. Yeah, it's been going on a long time. Hasn't what now? It's seven. It's an hour That's been perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Nice. Very nice. Yay, Greta. Thank you. So nice to meet you all. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for having us. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 That was very interesting, wasn't it? Very. Sure. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, Greta.